Hi everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate sigmoid mobilization and how to safely access the left ureter through this approach. I'm Tanu Rao and this is my YouTube channel over here. This is a crucial step in complex gynecological surgeries, especially in cases of deep infiltrating endometriosis or pelvic malignancy. In this video, we are using this technique for a multi-fibroid uterus with a broad ligament component. Our goal with sigmoid mobilization is to improve exposure and create a clear surgical feel, particularly when performing ureterolysis, bowel dissection or resecting endometriotic nodules. Now let us start by reviewing some key anatomical landmarks before we proceed ahead with the mobilization. When we initiate the sigmoid mobilization, we identify the mesocolon attachment and make an initial peritoneal incision near the line of thought. These are congenital adhesions and often have variations. This is done using a combination of sharp dissection with scissors or attached to it you can also use monopolar energy. Blunt dissection to create planes between the sigmoid mesocolon and the retroperitoneal space can be used at times. In this scenario I've used the robotic approach where I have monopolar scissors on my right hand and the fenestrated bipolar forceps on the left. However, you will see I do not tend to use a lot of bipolar energy. As we progress, we separate the sigmoid colon from the lateral abdominal wall, working towards the left pelvic side wall. There are a few important considerations here. To stay in the correct plane to minimize bleeding, we use counter-traction to create tension to define the tissue planes more clearly. When we do this, all we have to do is follow the bubbles where the pneumo seeps in and splits the alveolar tissue so that we have a clear understanding. Identifying and safeguarding the ureter. As we continue, we begin to see the ureter emerging beneath the mesocolon. To ensure there is a safe dissection, we look for peristalsis. This confirms that we've actually found the ureter because at times you may have a few blood vessels in the broad ligament or at times the internal iliac. Hence, it's really important for us to ensure that we have identified the right structure. Gentle dissection to clear the surrounding adhesions, particularly if there is fibrosis from endometriosis. Ensure you stay above the ureter rather than pulling it in um, the lateral direction as excessive traction can cause injury. At this stage, if deeper access is required, we can perform a ureterolysis, carefully separating the ureter from any adhesions or fibrotic tissue. So what is the clinical relevance and pitfalls? Now that we've successfully mobilized the um, ureter, let us discuss some important points. Excessive use of energy can lead to thermal injury inadvertently near the ureter. Misdirecting the dissection plane. So always use anatomical landmarks to stay in the correct retroperitoneal space. Not recognizing the variations that occur naturally in the human body. So the ureter's position can vary, especially in cases of large fibroids, endometriosis, previous surgeries. Hence, this is important to keep this in mind. This approach is particularly useful in deep infiltrating endometriosis, where the ureter is often encased in fibrosis requiring careful dissection. I hope you found this breakdown useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. See you later.